Hello everyone, I would like to review a couple of things on your handout with you and talk to you about the election of 1912. So, let's start by looking at a couple of things related to President Taft. So if you'll look at question two on your handout, one of the most important things that happens when Taft is president is the payne Aldrich tariff. And so we want to look at that for just one minute here. So, the question we want to think about was President Taft a progressive or a conservative? We know that his predecessor, Roosevelt, was a very big progressive, and he handpicks Taft to take over for him, and Taft is expected to carry on Roosevelt's progressive legacy. So we want to think about if he does that or not. One of the things that progressives care deeply about is a lower tariff. So progressives want lower tariffs because lower tariffs limit the power of monopolies because they allow more foreign products to come into the United States. And if more foreign products come in, then over, those overseas products mean that monopolies have to compete. And if they have to compete, they lower their prices. And so progressives believe in lower tariffs. So if you take a look right here on the screen, this um, screen tells us a little bit about the payne aldrich tariff. So I'm going to click on this definition. So it was a set of tax regulations by Congress that failed to significantly reduce tariffs. So the payne aldrich tariff does not reduce tariffs. So would it be progressive or conservative? If it, the payne aldrich tariff raises tariffs, so it would be conservative. So what does Taft do? Taft decides to support the Payne Aldrich tariff. So progressives um, are upset. Um, we're going to put that they dislike the tariff because it protects monopolies. So they expect Taft to side against it. Conservatives are happy. They like the Payne Aldrich tariff because it protects the big money, and the monopolies. So, who did Taft side with regarding the tariff? We know what he sided with. He chose, oops, chose the side of the conservatives. And he supports the pain Audrey tariff. So early on in his presidency, Taft sets an example that he's going to be more of a conservative than a progressive. And this is going to make a lot of the progressives upset, including President Roosevelt. The next thing that he does is he chooses the side of Ballinger over Pinchot. And this guy named Pinchot had been appointed by Roosevelt to protect the natural environment in the forest. Well, Taft fires him and supports a guy he chose called Ballinger. And they start to sell a lot of the forest to oil companies so they can cut the lands down and put factories on it. And this is really going to upset President Roosevelt. So when Roosevelt finds out that Ballinger was fired, Roosevelt decides to come out of retirement. He's actually in Africa in a hunting safari, decides to come back to the United States and challenge Taft personally. And so Taft begins to stumble. And if you'll take a look at this screen right here, um, it's going to show us some of the struggles that President Taft had. So, problems within the party. And if you will read this one paragraph right here that I've just highlighted in blue. And if you go ahead and pause the video right now so you have time to read it. I'm not going to wait for you, so you'll need to pause it when you've read it, then hit play. All right, so you've read that, and so it shows that Taft's really having a hard time keeping the progressives and the conservatives on board. So I'm going to show you now a political cartoon. This is one that we looked at the other day, but this political cartoon right here shows the division that was going on in the Republican Party. President Roosevelt had been a progressive, and so he was representative of the new types of Republicans. And there were a lot of old school Republicans like President Taft. And they don't want to join Roosevelt. They want to support monopolies. So these Republicans over here, they support monopolies. 
and they want to be conservative. They want to stay the way things used to be. President Roosevelt supports the people, and he's progressive, and so he wants to change some things. And so in this cartoon, it shows that Roosevelt is trying to come back and convince the Republicans to change over, but they're, they're not going to do that. It's going to be a hard thing to do that, and President Taft is now against him. So these two men have been friends, but now they become major enemies because they're different. Roosevelt is a progressive, and Taft is a conservative. So this is going to cause a lot of controversy. And so Taft is struggling right here to keep things together. Roosevelt comes back, can't convince Taft to change over to be a progressive, and so Roosevelt decides to break his promise that he wouldn't run for president again and actually run for a third term in 1912. So he creates his own party called the Bull Moose Party. So now let's look at the election of 1912 when Roosevelt tries to take back over. Take a look at this chart right here that shows the four candidates and I want you to write those down in your chart over here. I want you to hit pause on the video so you have enough time to write it down. When you finish, hit play again. Okay, so you've written the candidates down over here. Wilson the Democrat, Roosevelt the Progressive, Taft the Republican, and the Socialist candidate Debs. Remember, socialism was the idea that the government should take over all businesses and the government should own the business. That way they can make sure the prices were low for everybody. Capitalism was the belief that the government never owned the business and instead private people got to choose their businesses and never had to worry about the government taking over. So I want you to look at these numbers right here. Don't look at the electoral, but look at the popular. If you add the popular votes together for Roosevelt and Taft, you actually get more than the popular vote for Wilson. And so what happened is these two gentlemen were both Republicans. Roosevelt and Taft were Republicans. But because Roosevelt came back and decided to run, he split the entire Republican Party into two. He halved it. And so what he did is he divided the Republicans and basically opened the door for the Democrats to win. And Woodrow Wilson came in and won. So I want to show you a couple of political cartoons right here from the election. Excuse me. This is a cartoon of Roosevelt's party called the Bull Moose Party. Roosevelt said that because he said he was as strong as a bull moose and he could do anything and so here this cartoon shows him the latest arrival at the political zoo which was the bull moose party here are the candidates basically this cartoon leaves off Debs because he was a, an insignificant character but it shows Roosevelt Taft the two Republicans that have to vote and then Wilson right here how they're acting and how they feel right and so they're worried about who's gonna win but the Democrats come in and then finally, four candidates in this election. Taft representing the Republicans, TR breaking off from the Republicans and the Bull Moose Party, Wilson with the Democrats right here, and then Debs with the Socialists. And so Wilson comes in and he's able to win overwhelmingly. So let's look at a couple of questions over here. So what impact did Roosevelt joining the campaign race in 1912 have on the election? What influence did Roosevelt have on the chances of the Republicans to win? So I'm going to write some things down, but you need to put it in your own words. So basically what happened is Roosevelt split the Republican vote in half. And because of this, it allowed the Democrats to win the White House. So Roosevelt split the Republicans by becoming the third candidate and opposing Taft, the sitting president, and the Democrats win. I want to point out just a couple other things right here. On question 10, after Wilson got in, it said, what did he do with tariffs? Well, Wilson was very much a progressive, and so when it came to the payne Aldrich tariff, he repealed it, and he passed a law called the Underwood Tariff, which was the lowest tariff ever. And so by that one standard alone, President Wilson was far more progressive than President Taft because he supports those low tariffs. One last thing I'm going to talk about right here is question 12, when it said, how did Wilson respond to the monopolies in the country? He strengthens the Sherman Antitrust by passing a new law to limit monopolies, and it's called the Clayton Antitrust Law. 
and I'm going to put here that it was stronger than the Sherman antitrust um, law. So like the Sherman was like 1.0, the Clayton is 2.0, and it allows Wilson to be able to break down far more monopolies than President Taft or President Roosevelt had been able to do. All right, so that was a review of just some brief things associated with the election of 1912 and the presidencies of Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson.